Well, brothers and sisters, it's Brother John, Watchman for that great day. I'm going to share some thought and some ideas with you from our brother Bob, uh, Barber, and his recent video points out a November 8th uh, connection, uh, and I'll let it play here. I'll let this portion of the video play. This is actually exactly 40 days from September 27th to the blood moon on November 8th. Now, this is very significant because the number 40 represents a time of testing, a time of trial, a time of probation. Israel was in the wilderness for 40 years before they entered the promised land. Can this mean that we are entering our heavenly promised land at the rapture resurrection at this point? Hmm. You had the prophet Jonah warn Nineveh for 40 days that its destruction would come because of its many sins. Are we looking at that same 40 days as well leading up to this blood moon? Is God looking at all the citizens of America and waiting to see how they will vote collectively on the day of the blood moon, November 8th, where we will either choose life or death? My guess is going to be death because Israel is also doing their elections right around this time as well. And, of course, they're going to choose the wrong guy who will be the false messiah. Something to think about. That should get your attention. Remember, Jesus was tested and tempted in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. And I would now like to bring your attention to the planet Uranus. Uranus is the seventh planet from the sun, and it has the third largest radius of all the planets. It has 13 faint rings and 27 small moons, but... A characteristic that sets Uranus apart. Um, it spins on its side as it orbits the Sun. The trip takes about 84 years. Actually, it's 84 years. So, um, from what Bob just was sharing with us about, it was it was 40 days, right? 40 days. Uh, relevant to that as well, 40 days plus another five brings you to November 13th, all right, from November the 8th, plus five brings you to the 13th. That's when they're going to, um, as Bob has shown in his video, they're going to go to the Mount Sinai and uh, all the leaders, the world religious uh, body now, and receive something, I guess, maybe the the climate laws or something of that sort. Um, it's all very interesting, but I think the most interesting thing is right now working on the planet Uranus and the, um, let's see if I can share this a little and see what happens. So what we have is there's a solar eclipse, uh, I'm sorry, a lunar eclipse, the solar eclipse already happened um, on the 25th. Um, I believe it was the 25th. Yeah, it was the 25th of October. But what you're looking at right here, which you're probably not going to see too, too good, but over here on the right, right there is the is the uh, moon, and it's in its uh, color red, and then over here to the left, right here, right where my See that? I don't know if you can see it too well. The light's kind of in the way. I'm trying to try to cover it in some sort so maybe you get a better shot of it. No, it's not going to work. Get too much. Yeah, maybe. How's that? There we go. So now what you're seeing is right there. That is Uranus, and. If I move the clock forward, which you're not able to see too well, but right now it's at 11.8, which is November the 8th. And I'll just move the, the clock forward, which moves the moon, of course. Moon is working. And it's moving along. It's 5 o'clock in the morning, 5.30. Now it's up to 6 o'clock. And as the moon uh, lunar eclipse is happening, just about the time it touches, Uranus, right there, the planet, uh, the moon starts to lose the effect of the 
uh, lunar eclipse. So as Uranus moves through the moon, if you notice, it's almost as you see the the uh, the target area is the red dots that are moving, and that is uh, the planet Uranus as it moves and as it comes through and out the other side of the moon, it finishes off the eclipse. So by the time you would be able to see after this conjunction, once you see, if you had a telescope, and, the, and I'm told that you'll be able to see, uh, in some cases, if it's a clear sky, even at this time, you'll be able to see the actual planet. And so it is a blue planet. Now, one interesting thing about this is Brother, uh, Brother Gregory's dream. And I'd like to share that with you at this time. Here we go. This is a dream I had from the Lord. The dream started like this. I was sleeping in my bed when suddenly I felt myself being lifted up at a tremendous speed. I remember seeing the shaft of light as I was heading upward. I could feel it in my chest that I was being snatched away from this earth. I remember thinking to myself as it was happening that this is it. This is the rapture. This is the catching away of the church. No sooner had I thought that, I found myself back in bed, and I remember thinking, oh, it was just a dream. But then I felt compelled to go to the window and look out the blinds. And as I looked up, I could see a bright full moon in the west. I could see leaves on the trees. But then I felt compelled to look over to my right toward the northern sky. And as I looked over, I could see through the trees as the leaves were no longer found on them. To my amazement, I saw what appeared to be a huge blue moon. But this was too big to be a moon. I assumed that this must be some sort of planet. I will just add at this moment that the huge blue uh, recognizes the planet uh, Uranus because it is three times the size of Earth. So, just let it continue to play, it's almost done. And in the planet there were black speckled spots. These spots were rectangular in shape, and there were many of them. The dream ended at this point. Alright, so that, that was an interesting dream. And as it relates, if we go back in the, when he was looking at the, the trees, and the trees so the one on the right had leaves, the other one on the left had no leaves. Uh, like between the timing of winter and fall. So just an interesting connection. And then of course he sees this huge blue planet with these spots right here. That who knows what they are at this point. Um, Maybe, I don't know, good, good guess on anybody's part still. But could it be that this blue planet that he saw is Uranus? And Uranus is now getting ready on the 8th of November to uh, have conjunction with what I just showed you. Conjunction with, uh, with the moon at the same time as the solar eclipse. So just interesting, which is happens to be a full moon because that's the, I mean a lunar, I'm sorry, a lunar eclipse. Sometimes I get my uh, eclipses messed up, but this is the moon and it just came through a lunar eclipse. And if you back it up, the eclipse is still happening just as it starts to conjunct with Uranus right there. That's Uranus. If we go in on it, you got a little blue or actually it's a big blue three times bigger than earth brothers and sisters so I just think that's pretty incredible and as you as it starts to starts its conjunction there it goes once it goes behind you're seeing that's the end of the it finishes the soul the lunar eclipse finishes it by the time it moves on the other side moves past and the conjunction is coming to an end it ends the 
See, once it shows up again, it ends the it ends the um, time of the eclipse, and it's only another one, two, three, four. It's about four, four to five, maybe 10, 15 minutes left, and that's at like 7.38. I can just finish it to see where it goes. Let's see if we type in the moon. Just give me a second. Let me type in the moon here. Moon. Oops. Here we go. And then if I just move it, let's see, back it up a little bit. So back up to like 30. Right there where, where the Uranus just comes off the edge of the moon. It's not conjuncting anymore. About 7.34 a.m. in the morning. And then you got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And about 15 min minutes later at, say, 7.50, uh, there it is. There's your, your full moon shining again after the eclipse. And it's just 7.50 a.m. in the morning. So that's, that's all I wanted to say about that. And then, of course, here is the, the planet with these with these uh, rectangle black boxes that Brother Greg had seen in his dream. So a lot to think about. Uh, one more thing I have to bring to your mind and your thought is this. I'll just turn the camera around now. And that is that November 8th, which happens to be election, uh, midterm elections, if we should be here, right? All of this is all tentative to the day, because we could be raptured today and, you know, no need to go any further, right? We'll be finally in the place we're waiting to be. I, for one, pray that it is today. But should we be here and we should see November 8th, which is like next week, let's see. Yep, it's like next, it's it's the following Tuesday, it's not next Tuesday, it's it's the Tuesday after. All right, Tuesday, Tuesday, the sun will rise and the darkness just came to my mind. The 1st of November, oh, interesting, the 1st of November um, is the elections for Israel. So they'll be voting a new government in, and Netanyahu seems poised to win. Um, one thing about Netanyahu is that a rabbi, uh, uh, Menachem uh, Schneerson, and it was an article that was written, uh, Israeli, uh, Israel 365 News, back in November 19th, 2018, talking about what this rabbi had said, and this was a highly respected uh, rabbi. Uh, he was the founder of the, the Lubavitch movement, which has also created the Noahide laws um, and is promoting them. And a lot of that is no good. That is that is the, the Talmud believing uh, Jews that believe in these things. And of course they don't believe in Christ Jesus. That's, that's the major uh, part about all this, okay? When the rapture comes, there's going to be a, uh, that's when the fullness of the Gentiles comes in, and the blindness on the Jews will come off. So a lot of these Jews now that are waiting for their Messiah and going to receive this Messiah in his own name, and even are now saying that he's here. This is one that was saying, promoting that the Messiah was very near. But anyway, I'll read you a little bit of this. Uh, Netan's, Netanyahu's most solid connection to the Messiah was was through Rabbi Meknachin uh, Mendel Schneerson, the Lubavitch Chabad leader who died in 1994. The, the two first met in 1984 when Netanyahu was Israel's ambassador to the United Nations. Before Netanyahu returned to Israel in 1988 uh, to join Likud, 
the rabbi gave him advice which provi uh, which proved to be the the uh, which proved at least partly prophetic and what this rabbi said to Netanyahu was this you will fight with 119 people. Now that is what makes up the Knesset. Uh, presaging, uh, presaging, presaging the coalition troubles that are plaguing the Prime Minister to this day. Uh, Rabbi David Nakshan, a close friend of Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who witnessed the dialogue, related that the rabbi was confident that some great good would come out of Netanyahu's political trials. Now, he's been going through quite a bit of, uh, 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 you know, things in his, in his, uh, in his day. You know, they, a lot of uh, charges. You know, saying he took money and, you know, bribes and things like that. Um, I, I don't believe that. But the bottom line is. This rabbi had said, I'm trying to find it in the article. Um, okay, it's very clear to see in, it's very clear that we see in Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu that he is fulfilling his destiny as uh, Mashiach ben Yosef. So they believe that, that, uh, uh, Netanyahu identifies with Ben Joseph and they're still waiting for the King David so to speak to come all right this is their beliefs that is to say the reincarnation of Jonathan Rabbi Sari told breaking news at the time the name Netanyahu is composed of some letters as the name Jonathan trying to find that one part that you really need to hear. Anyway, it talked about this Rabbi uh, Schneerson had talked about Netanyahu being in uh, the prime ministership so that he could hand the keys to the Messiah. Uh, I can't find it, but it's in this article. Here it is. There it is. So he will make it. And and what what uh, the rabbi uh, Sneerson had said is he's going to make it through this all these trials and tribulations. We've seen it happen up to now. All the things that we've seen happen up to now, and that's how it's going to be. And as well, he says he will make it through this and he will continue and I hope this is the way he puts it I hope he'll be able to hand his keys over to Mashiach which is the Messiah and they're saying that the Messiah is here brothers and sisters and well and will have the complete and true redemption so they're waiting for this this redemption which is already <laughs> it's already been done by the Lord Jesus Christ. That is where our redemption is in Him. Okay, we're redeemed by Christ Jesus. But, of course, they don't see that because that is what the Bible says in Romans 11, 25, that the blindness in part is only, is upon the Jews until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. So, keep that in mind. So we have all this going on in November 1st, all right? That's the, that's the uh, elections for Israel. And they've said that Netanyahu seems poised to win. We'll still wait and see. It's only a few days from now. I mean, we're already, today's the 29th. So we've got tomorrow and the 31st. And then on Monday is the 1st. So we should know sometime Monday or even Tuesday what's going on with the election after this particular time of having no government, you know, the, the unified government, the, the, uh, the shared government, all the things that are going on in that, in that country right now um, with uh, Lapeer, uh, uh, the new, the, the, the present uh, leadership, uh, the prime minister for now. 
at any rate, there's a lot going on. And November 1st, and then we're starting a count, what? Seven days from November 1st is what? The 8th, the midterms. It depends if we're here or not. And it depends if we're here after that. It just, it all relates to the days that we're living. So there's something else I'm trying to think of that I was going to say. Oh, the planet Uranus. The planet Uranus has an 84-year, uh, it takes that long to go around the sun. So that's how long, like we have a 365-day year. They have a 84-year trip around the sun. That's how long it takes. So I just happened to look up what happened 84 years ago from November the 8th, uh, 2022 and this is what happened and uh, this is pretty uh, it might blow your mind because at the time of the solar eclipse a uh, lunar eclipse <gasps> at the time of the lunar eclipse the moon becoming blood all right that's on November the 8th this is what happened and also the conjunction this is how I'm tying it together the conjunction with um, Uranus at the same time as the solar uh, lunar eclipse, how many times am I going to say it? The lunar eclipse and the conjunction with Uranus on November the eighth, midterms, election, uh, decision of whatever whatever happens then, and this is what happened: eighty-four years, one revolution of Uranus around the sun, eighty-four years, and so we went back and it put you at November eighth, nineteen thirty-eight. So here we are 84 years later, November the 8th, this coming, 2022. That's when it made one complete loop around the sun. So this is what happened. Midterm elections back in those days of 1938 were held in the United States. The incumbent Democratic Party lost 72 seats in the House and 7 in the Senate. I just find that very interesting because if we're here for the 8th of November, what will happen in the Senate and what will happen in the House? All right. The next thing is, is the big thing now. November the 9th. Remember, this is still before the 13th when the, the rulers or the leaders, the world religious leaders go to Mount Sinai and, you know, come up with some kind of you know, climate change laws or whatever they're going to, some kind of Ten Commandments plus one, whatever, whatever is going on there. But November the 9th, 84 years ago, right, when this last time where it was in the same spot, I don't know if there was a, an eclipse at that time, but it was 84 years ago, all right? So that's the, the trip around the sun. So here's what happened November 9th, 1938, the day after midterm elections. A wave of violence targeting Jews uh, occurred throughout Germany and Austria in retaliation for the assassination of this Ernest uh, von Raff. Nazi authorities did not interfere as Jewish shops and synagogues were burned and looted, but 20,000 Jews were arrested. The vast amount of broken glass littering the streets outside the Jewish shops uh, gave the night its name. It was called Crystal Knot. And that was basically, you know, 10 years before Israel became a nation. And that 10 years that they had was, I mean, you could even look at it like it was Revelation chapter 2, you know, verse 10, where some of you will have tribulation for 10 years or 10 days as the case might be but at any rate they had tribulation did they not until until after World War II and the uh, Nazi party and the destruction of m millions of Jews as well as other people other peoples many people died but finally in 1948 May 14th 1948 they became a nation and that's where we are today the fig tree nation, the people of Israel, well, they had almost lost their original tongue, never actually lost it, but they re-gathered uh, re in a place that God had uh, called, uh, you know, called them back to. 
So when they are in the land, the Bible says, when they are in the land, they shall not be removed. So they, they are in the land. Uh, people have been trying to remove them since they got back in the land. And there's, a, there's quite a line here between uh, who governs the people, the government. We can always look at the government and, and realize the government uh, can rule righteously or unrighteously. So we have to remember that. Um, but the people are people no matter what. There's Jewish and Palestinian people that are friends, neighbors, uh, care about each other. You know, we always see the violence between the two factions, and that's because of the leaders and the governmental uh, 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 objectives, all right? The way the government wants the, the things to go, and they're the, usually the hand that, that uh, causes all of the, you know, destruction. So leave it to people, and yeah, there'll be arguments amongst normal people and everyday people, but really it's the governments that uh, come in and they can be bad. So anyway, that's pretty much what I wanted to share with you guys. Hopefully uh, you were blessed by the information, and i um, give you the blast on the show far, and keep looking up, because the day is near. I hope it's today. I'm ready to go, brothers and sisters. Honestly, let's just uh, keep him in your thoughts and keep looking up. God bless you all. Brother John, watchman for that great day, out. Bless you all. See you later.